Oh, ho, 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 ho. Here we go. This is a big, big vault today. We've got um, eight twenties done last week. We had a full heroic clear that we pugged, so it's a pretty juicy vault. I've had all twenties done before last week, but I didn't record it for whatever reason. That was being dumb. What did we actually get then? Uh, this is actually so hard. Do I take three set or the trinket? Or do I take 41 shoulders knowing that I'm going to be able to upgrade these in two weeks time? When does, I'm going to have to go and double check this. When does the catalyst open? Wow, catalyst. Okay, so the date is the 17th slash 18th, so it's actually next week. Do you know what I might do? I might actually go and do a heroic clear before choosing, because honestly, Boone is ridiculously good for AoE. It's such a good trinket. I don't really care about pushing this week either. So to me, it's either these shoulders or I'm taking the Boon. Because I've just looked on Wowhead and they've released an article today. And the date is going to be the 17th slash 18th of January. So that puts us next week. In which case, I really don't care about just getting three set this week. I think I'm better off picking for the future here. I still, I might go and do a full heroic clear and see if I get, I might take four set just to guarantee it. You know, I'm, in, in fact, do you know what it is? If I get a piece from the raid, I would definitely take shoulders because I'm going to get four set next week. If I don't get a piece from the raid, then I might take these because that guarantees four set the week afterwards. And that's a really good pushing week, right? Um, yeah, next week is a sanguine explosive tyrannical. That's a really good pushing week for, for tyrannical. Yeah, I think so. I think that's going to be the play. So I'm going to leave that for now. I'm going to go and do a full heroic clear um, tonight or tomorrow night, and then we'll come back and assess at that point. Okay, we came back later the same day. We did a full clear of heroic. We did a full clear of normal. We also did the only looking for raid bosses that we needed. And guess what? We got nothing. We got absolutely nothing. I've had nothing from raid. I've shown my gear. I have nothing. <laughs> this is just... <laughs> Everything's Mythic Plus or Crafted Gear. I don't have anything. I've literally full cleared Heroic and Normal the last two weeks. Has it been on for four weeks? The first two weeks, maybe? Yeah, I think it has four weeks. Yeah, something like that. The first two weeks, I think I maybe got an offhand dagger. Do I have it in my bag from Normal? Yeah, that's from, that's from Raid, right? So I, I've had one piece of loot. And both of those weeks, I full cleared Normal and I did the first... Five bosses of Heroic. I didn't kill Dathia. But I still called, killed five bosses. And I've had one piece of loot from Raid. <laughs> Bring back personal loot, Blizzard. Bring back personal loot. My god, being a rogue when I'm stuck in there with rogues, monks, warriors and evokers is just brutal. Every single tier piece has like eight to nine people rolling on it. Of course I'm not going to get any when there's that many people. It's just savage. It's brutal. Anyway, right, so I've had a long, hard think about this. We're taking the shoulders because this is the only chance, the only chance that I have of potentially getting four set next week. Um, I don't think I really mind the shoulder item level. You know, next week I've got the loot from the vault, so that's potentially a, a chest or headpiece. Um... But I, I can't, like, if I take shoulders, I can't guarantee that I'm going to get four set next week. This is the only way I'll be guaranteeing it. It's a decent item level, you know, 4 one, one. I'm going to take it, and then in the future, hopefully, <laughs> I'll get another piece of tier. Who knows? If I ever get a piece from Raid, I'll be absolutely amazed. Oh, my God. And I get a horse of valor just to top it off. Cherry on top of all of that. <laughs> i <I'm> spending hours... <laughs> Of trying to get gear, I get a 21 Halls of Valor. I hate Halls of Valor so much. This dungeon is just brutal.
Anyway, right, let's equip these. Haste Versa. Whatever, wear them. We'll wear them. There we go. I'm now 407 item level. Alright, well, with the vault section out of the way, could be disappointing again. Let's move on to the weekly drama. So I've put a spin on the weekly vault video. Let's pull up some forum posts. Now, I want to go through what everyone's thinking, what's happening on the forums. I'm going to go through the, the biggest posts, the posts that are getting the most traction on the Blizzard forums, and then we'll go through the drama in there, give you my initial takes and see what other players are thinking and my response to them. Um, there's some really good points in here as well, so you'll you'll get my thoughts on that. It's going to be a bit more of a of a react video. So the first topic is the social climate of this game is tiresome and demoralizing. As I continue to play this game with my wife, it's becoming increasingly apparent that this is for sure one of the most toxic games I've played. Almost everyone is pushy, impatient, apathetic, and generally just a disgruntled android aiming for that illusionary ego boost. I don't think that's necessarily true, right? Almost everyone, that's quite a big push. But certainly there is a push in the game for people to just try and spend their time efficiently and get things done first, right? And be the best at the game with the least amount of time put into it. So... There's not a lot of room for new players, which is one of the worst parts about this game. I have no idea how Blizzard fixed this, but yeah, it's really, really hard. They've tried to fix it in the past by putting what they call friction in the game. I genuinely think they've tried to fix this right by putting friction in the game. So things like covenants and stuff, they've tried to like break the meta so that people won't be meta slaves and like they won't make it so that you have to have this exact set of talents and you have to be in this gear. And it, but it's always going to get mathed out. Like, I don't think there's anything that Blizzard can do to solve it. Um, unless you make talents like 500 points, so you can't possibly math them out. Um, so the trees are just huge, which they've sort of done right, but there is already math out there. Um, I don't know. There's no way of them breaking the meta. You're, the game has to be defined by its meta, but instead they need to make room for new players regardless. They need to punish people who, you know, aren't particularly friendly to new players. Um, they need to have, like, actual in-game mods and things, but, you know, it's it, it's definitely there. I just don't think it's as much as this person's saying. So almost everyone don't agree. Um we follow the guides, we watch the videos, sometimes for hours, just to make sure we get the fights to avoid being called out. Yes, this is exactly true. You join a perk raid, right? And you mess up two or three mechanics in a row, and guess what? You get kicked. It's an awful culture. Um, and it sounds like you're doing everything you can. You know, you're watching videos, you go to a ready check pull, and you watch their five-minute videos before you get to the boss. So you know all the mechanics, but... It's sometimes it just doesn't work. Like, you need the experience. So regardless, part of learning is through executing and practice. Exactly. And we're hardly given that chance. Yep, yeah, true. Like I just said, two or three pulls in, you mess it up, you're getting kicked. At this point, we pretty much have to play tank and healer and create all of our own groups or join a like-minded guild, which we should have done anyways. Yep. Uh, couldn't agree more. Make your own Mythic Plus keys. Go and join a guild. My two biggest tips to anyone who's trying to get into high-end content. Pugging is the worst. I know some people just have to pug, and that's why I do pug content. But yeah, it's um, it's it's not the best. New players have it rough when it comes to the expectations of other players. Absolutely. I always knew this game was a bit toxic, but I didn't think it was this common or on this level. You know, I've not had that quite experience. Maybe I'm playing a different version of the game, though. Um, yeah. Sometimes it happens... But it's not that often. I think that the how often it is, it is getting overblown here. So many people act like logical robots, obsessed with metrics and performance. It's fine for there to be a set of standards that is to be expected, but it's obvious that on average, many people who play this game hate their own lives and project that onto others through their overly aggressive competitive climate and intentional game design. I don't know how that doesn't make sense. I guess you'd leave it there. An intentional game design. That's Blizzard, right? Because that's not the same people. Many players, yeah, that, that doesn't make sense. But anyway, that to me, again, is massively overblown. People are obsessed with performance. Everyone in life, right? Life is life is tough. I'm gonna <laughs> come and sit down with Papa Galea and listen to his story, folks. And I'm not gonna uh, go on for too long. Um, life is tough. People don't have a lot of game time, right? Like they just don't. But I. 
I make videos, I'm full-time employee, I have to look after family, I maybe get to sit down and game for like eight to ten hours a week. Like that's still a lot for most people, but I want to get the most that I can out of those 10 hours. Do you know what I mean? I've quit raiding because I want to focus on Mythic Plus. I couldn't do both. Like I would barely be able to play Mythic Plus with a kid uh and raiding. Like it just it wouldn't happen. So I've chosen Mythic Plus, but yeah, man, I, like some like some people they're not competitive because they want to be the next uh now or Jinji, right? They're competitive because they want to get the most out of their time. So I think that it's fine to be competitive and I think it's being overblown a bit how bad this is, but I agree it is a problem, right? Like this is actually a problem in the game. Um and they they've probably had a really bad experience like a few times on the trot, which is really unfortunate. And I, I hope that they still keep playing the game because, you know, I love the game and I want to see it do well. Um, but Blizzard needs to do something. I don't know what it is. Like, I, I actually have no idea how they fix this, really. But it's a it's a tough spot for new players. Um, I don't know whether the, there's... I think there's a Final Fantasy fourteen system where you can be flagged as a new player and then you can flag yourself as someone to help new players. I would love for that system to come in. I think they need to overhaul the guild finder system again. Um, you know, there should be new player guilds, right? Where new players get together and then you as a veteran player can like come in and help those new players. Um, and you get rewarded for that. You get like runes, you get gold, you get mounts and things like cosmetics should be put up. Things like that where they, they try and build like a community spirit and you get rewarded for being a good community person. Um, Something like that, I don't know, but you know, in general, the, the new player content's friggin' harsh, like really harsh, because, you know, everyone wants to do well and they want to, they don't, everyone hates their own life, no, they don't, either. everyone wants to spend their time efficiently, so it's just, it's a, it's efficiency world of Warcraft, it's a, everyone's a meta slave. Um, anyway, let's get this finished, I've spent so long on this, it's completely exhausting to be surrounded by these personalities and run into them so often, but yeah, I get it, we should make our own groups and no one is forcing us to do this content, etc, etc. I hate that response when everyone says, and no one's forcing you to do this content, well, do you know what, the game would just die if no one played Mythic Plus or Raid, um, other than with guilds, like, so many people subscribe to the game to, um, go and pug content, like, it's just an awful response. People should, but the game would die if uh, if people either just quit or they um, like just didn't play the game in the way that they wanted to at start off with, right? Like in in general, I I just I don't like that response. I think you should recognize that it's an issue, um, and give these people like actual outs, like say, look, do you know what? You're having a bad time. Come and play with me. I I want to sort of make a guild in the future, but I just don't have a time. Like, if I become a full-time content creator in the future, then I, I would make a, a newbie-friendly community um, and try and help our players, I think, because I, I want new players to come into this game, so it's a it's a bad response to give this. Um, I see the exact same excuses written on here all of the time to take from the fact that too many people who play this game embody childish, childishly selfish and nasty personality traits. Yeah, I don't come across it that often, but... Uh, if you have come across it a few times in a row, then I yeah apologize on the behalf of others because it's just yeah, it's not fun. Um, I hope we can find a guild that works out well for us, as it's a chill game, and I really like the ambience and overall aesthetic feel of combat, etc. It's just disappointing to feel apprehension when it comes to most of our forms of content, even when being very much new and learning. Yeah, it's true. It's a great game. Um, some people ruin it though. I think that's the the motto of this story. I hope that you do find a guild, my friend. You probably don't watch my content. There's no chance that you watch my content, actually. I have almost a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a percentage of the people who play WoW who watch my content, so there's no chance. But yeah, it's the sentiment, hopefully, that comes across. Mythic plus punishment. This is a, another interesting topic. So, man, there needs to be a better system for abandoning keys. Either drop IO when you leave a group or make it to where you can't enter another instance for X amount of time and use a vote system to determine if a key is dead or not. I can see this sort of system working, but I also think that it could be abused in some way. I'm not really sure how, but 
He then says, tired of having to do the same key five times to get a new dungeon because people decide to leave when it won't be timed. Yeah, this is the same issue, right? What I was talking about people don't have all the time in the world. If I join a plus 20 court of stars because I'm hunting for the trinket, right? If the key is just dead in the water and we're going to spend an hour doing it, like I genuinely might leave um, because I want to get, you know, two keys done in the same amount of time. I mean, that's not true because I, I want to get the weekly done. A plus 20 is not a good example because that would be for my weekly chest. Um, like a plus 16 or something, right? I'm, I don't know. I'm for drinking a plus 16. And it's not going to go towards my weekly vault slots. Um, you know, it, it comes back to efficiency, right? I've got a limited amount of life in me and time to spend each week. And sometimes people have to make those sort of decisions. A lot of time people just leave like far too early and I hate that. Like if but if you've actually hit a wall and like you've just died to a boss three times, sometimes it's like, okay, I, I just I'm gonna have to go. I'm sorry guys. Like I need to leave. Um, I guess that's maybe what they're saying here. Um where there's a there's a voting system for a key dying. I I actually think the main thing that needs to be fixed is if people just leave early for no real reason, I think they should be reportable. Um, I think that like chat logs should be reviewed. Um, if people have like toxic and trying to int someone else's key for whatever reason, I've had it in the past. I remember there was a tank, um, that told a hunter, said, he said, hunter, please use binding shot on the next pack. And the hunter was like, I know my own abilities. I'll know when to press binding shot. You don't have to tell me when to do it. And then he AFK'd and just destroyed the key. And like we can't report them. There's no option to report someone for that. I think that should maybe be implemented. But again, this is a real issue in the game. Um, I don't know how you fix it. I don't know whether it, like um, a voting system could work particularly well. I'm not sure. So I don't know how it would work with group content. But it's an interesting concept. Maybe maybe something like that could work. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on it. Um, another very very hot topic: tier accessibility for non-readers. Uh, non-readers, non-raiders, hello and happy new year to all. I have been thoroughly enjoying Dragonflight thus far. Same to you. Um, I'm absolutely loving it. But just wanted to voice my concerns regarding tier accessibility for M plus players. I was sold on the you can just play whatever part of the game you want aspect of Dragonflight. I have no interest in raiding, PvP, collecting professions or anything else. And wow, I just want to M plus with my friends and family. It's my niche and I love it. Exactly. Like, bro, you'd sound like me. Um, I gave up Raiden for this reason. I uh, I play it first and foremost with like my brothers and some close uh, friends of my my brothers who have played with for a long time. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm exactly the same. We are being seriously held back by the lack of accessibility to tier pieces. Don't agree with that. I'm playing with some players that have maxed out tier. I'm maybe like ten percent behind them in terms of damage. Um, I'm like ten eye levels behind them still push like 20s 21s or particularly hell pack i mean i am but i know i'm going to get tier in a couple of weeks time so probably a few weeks it's going to matter as i'm sure you know tier is extremely powerful for pretty much every spec to the point that a person without their tier bonus is basically trolling at the key levels we're playing at it's not true not true in comparison to shadowlands shadowlands i might have agreed with you a bit more um but mo most tier sets are what like 10 percent damage 10% damage in a key is a lot for one player, but, you know, it's it's not going to int the key, right? I don't think. Uh, most of the time, people are going to die to, like, mistakes and things. We frequently have a three-person party and put a DPS and a healer, and almost every player at a similar Mythic Plus score to us has a full tier set. Yeah, at the moment, pretty much everyone does, I agree. If you're in plus 20s, most people do. We really feel like we're starting to hit our cap without access to it. We have gotten two pieces of tier between the three of us from the vault in total. Now, what you can do, and not everyone wants to do this, but you can just farm, uh, like spend, uh, so I do about an hour, hour and a half in a normal raid, and then another hour and a half in a um, heroic raid up to Razagath. So I clear at the moment, like, is that 15 bosses? Yeah, 15 bosses in a week, and you get tier. My big issue with it is that actually I don't get any loot from raid because every single raid that I join is full of monks, rogues, devastation evokers, and prop warriors. Like, warriors 
monks, rogues, and evokers being in the same group is just ridiculous because the the most played healer, the most played tank, the most played DPS specs are all in the same tier slot. And because it's not personal loot, I have had zero loot from whatever it is, three, four, three weeks of pretty much full clearing and in normal and then quite a bit of heroic clearing. I've had no tier pieces from it. I've had two pieces, two, yeah, two tier pieces from the, the vault so far. I've not had more. Um, so I want personal loot back for Pug Raiden, to be honest, but um, I'm not that bad with it, though, because I don't think I'm getting held back that much. I understand tier will eventually be accessible to us weekly, but it will still be another month until we are able to complete our specs. True, it's like we're playing an incomplete class in the meantime, just because we have no interest in raiding. The just play what you want aspect of Dragonflight really missed the mark on tier availability for Mythic Plus players. I hope something can be done to address this in future seasons. I think that tier should be farmable from Mythic Plus. Like I, I genuinely think that after plus 15s, tier pieces should drop from bosses as a very rare chance. Um, you know, every... Five keys. What does that say? Every two and a half hours, let's say a tier piece drops from a Mythic Plus uh, uh, dungeon. So let's say that um, Ruby Life Pools drops a pair of shoulders for leather, right? There's then a Titan Forging chance that you could randomly get that as a tier piece. I legitimately think that that should be the case. Um, the reason well, I think that should be the case is because for raiding players right like you can actually just get funneled gear to the point where like they've said after two or three weeks every single raider has four set like if you raid you have four set right now so mythic plus players you should be able to do that as well um maybe you limit it so that each person can only get one piece of tier a week so then after four weeks plus vault maybe after three weeks or two weeks they get it but yeah but they maybe do something like that I think that, that may be over the top because, again, uh, I understand that Blizzard wants players to play raiding and Mythic Plus content and PvP. They want people to do all three. And the people who do all three should get the most loot. But that might just mean that you could get four set in the first week and then you could get uh, four set after like two or three weeks if you're a Mythic Plus player. So say if you, if you do PvP, right, and you do Mythic Plus and you do uh, raiding, that means first week you could get four set. If you just do one of those pieces of content, then maybe two or three weeks in you get four set. I think that's reasonable, personally. I don't think it's reasonable to have to wait like six to eight weeks to uh, to get your four set after two months. Like eight weeks is a long time. Like two months, that's like half a season, right? Um, or you bring the catalyst in. Like you let you, you used to open the catalyst after two weeks. That would help as well, right? Like those are your two options. Um, but yeah, agreed. It can be it can be frustrating. Explain how DBM or weak auras is not cheating to me. Not every function, but specifically the ones that automatically spam chat with distracting messages visible to other players in response to mechanics. How is that allowed? How is that not automated gameplay? How is that not bannable due to being incredibly disruptive? The game has a serious problem with this and it is making it extremely frustrating for me, especially when the majority of the players in the group are using the same add-ons, sometimes with different markers in the same group. It is automated, it makes the gameplay much easier, and it is disruptive to players that choose not to use such things. How is it allowed on that specific level? Will Blizzard take a stance against normalised cheating in this game? I don't think it's cheating. There's lots of uh, information out there about weak auras, how to get them, how to play with them. Everyone can use it. It's an equal playing field. Cheating would be something that's like against the rules, right? So, I mean, I'm being very semantic here, but I still think that I don't want add-ons in the game, personally. Um, I think it would increase the skill cap significantly. Things like um, League of Legends, PoE, I'm thinking of other genres that are kind of competitive, right? Could you imagine if they had add-ons in there? I think add-ons are a, they were a function of the default Blizzard UI not being particularly good in the past, and Blizzard were like, well, we'll let others do the development for us. 
The default Blizzard UI is pretty good now. I think you add a DPS meter in, which you can enable if you want. Um, I think you should be able to take if you don't want to appear on DPS meters in the game. I think that would be good for new players. Um, maybe the, the Blizzard UI gets taken a little bit further, but then they, I think they could actually just rip the rug out from underneath the game and just like take away add-ons. I think we're getting close enough now where it's possible. Um, it would make it so much easier for them as well. Like designing boss fights around the Mythic Raiders, having weak cores that just say, run away at this point, come back at this point, go and jump down that hole on Jailer so you drop the bomb in that specific um, uh, hole. Like It's just... Yeah, these things can play the game for you, right? Um, like I said, it's not against the rules, but yeah, it makes everything much easier, and I sort of see what they're saying. I am I think the sentiment, I'm with them. I just, it's, the, the argument is um, is badly founded and isn't particularly well worded. It's not cheating. Um, M plus isn't fun anymore. It was fun in BFA. Even through the annoying affix of beguiling, it was fun. It was less fun in Shadowlands, but by the end of Shadowlands in, Shadowlands in Season 3 and Season 4, it was okay. It is no longer fun at all. On any week in the past, we had fun weeks and weeks where we didn't do keys. Now every week is just annoying. Every week has at least one annoying affix. Every week's is anti-fun. The seasonal affix itself is not fun. I think that's probably the biggest part of it. Um, I'll get onto that in a second. Let's just keep going. Doing old, bad, old dungeons is also not fun. If you're going to bring back dungeons from eight years ago, at least bring back fan favourites, not freaking Halls of Valor. <laughs> True. <laughs> I'm going to be releasing a series shortly, and I hate Halls of Valor, man. God. I don't mind it in an organised group where everyone knows what they're doing, but for new players, that dungeon's just brutal. Like, they need to rework that. It's... Yeah. You guys really need to look at affixes and what they mean. They do not add anything to the keys besides annoyance. There was a reason everyone only played volcanic bursting weeks, and your solution was to rearrange the affix combos to put at least one annoying affix on every week. Not true. There's some good weeks. There are going to be some good weeks. The sanguine week that we just had was decent, right? Sanguine quaking. Um, it's not particularly annoying. Sanguine sort of, but not really. It just isn't fun. The data shows M plus participation is down every expansion after BFA. Um, does it? I think that's different. It's for different reasons. It was Christmas week. There was some information where everyone, like every content creator just jumped on the bandwagon. Oh, Mythic Plus is dying. It's Christmas. People aren't playing Mythic Plus because it's Christmas, right, guys? It's... Not because uh, it's bad. I mean, it is also really hard. It was the worst affix combination. Tyrannical Grievous, brutal as well. So that was a, a big reason for it. Listen to feedback of players who play the game mode most before you completely kill the game mode. Also, just uncap Valor after the race to world first is over. Maybe. I can see that. Um... But the point in here, right? So every week is anti-fun. The seasonal affix itself is not fun. All right, so the every week is anti-fun is not true. There are some weeks which are worse than others still. Um, week on week variance is good. I think that that needs to be in there for the health of Mythic Plus. I think it would get stale really quickly if you didn't have it. So I disagree. I like what they've done with the affixes. I think they need to look at some of the combinations again, and I'd agree that some of the combinations are much, much worse than others. Tyrannical Grievous being one of them, with how unfriendly the current season is to healers, I would say that that would be at the top of my priority list to make sure that that never happens again. Tyrannical Grievous, just get it out of here. Just just, just can it. Blizzard can that uh, affix combination. Um, the seasonal affix itself is not fun. It's way more abrasive than other weeks, uh, other weeks, other seasons. Some of the most fun in the game that I've ever had was season three, right? Was it season, no, season four? I don't remember, with the relics, season three in uh, Shadowlands. That was unbelievably good. When you would get A lined up with all of your CDs and you've just got like so much cooldown reduction, um, you're padding more damage on the runes themselves, on the relics, sorry, not runes. Um, you've got the option of using the um the stealth version the speed version right like that is 
that was peak game. Whoever designed that, get them to design more. Um, this one's okay, but you can tell it was rushed. Like, they sort of have been doing all of these systems and put a lot of effort into system design with Mythic Plus. Um, well, I guess just with WoW in general, talents, etc. right? That then they've kind of gone, oh, we need to do a seasonal affix, it feels like. Let's just make it so people have to go and walk into each other, a time old mechanic from raiding. Um, all right, that's pretty good. Not particularly thematic for uh, season one, but it's it's decent. Um, I do think that though it's it adds an extra mechanic which is sort of annoying, and it's it's not the most fun. So I'd agree it's 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 not that fun. Um, doing bad old dungeons is also not fun. True, um, but I I I don't think it's to do with them being bad. I think it's to do with them being hard. I think. <laughs> Again, I sort of un fundamental like sentiment of the post. I agree with right. Balls of Valor is brutal, um, especially for pug players. They needed to balance these uh, dungeons way more before they hit the public. Um, they've 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 been through and like gutted some dungeons. Um, uh, like as your vault has been gutted, right? Uh, there's been lots of changes in there. It's still one of the worst keys. Like the, the comparison that go and do a Shadow Moon Burial Grounds plus 20 and then go and do a plus 20 Halls of Valor, it feels like you're playing a different game. Like it's friggin' brutal, that dungeon in comparison. I'm, I'm not joking. I can go and stand and like soak a boss mechanic for like 10 seconds in Shadow Moon Burial Grounds. Every single boss mechanic is one shotting in Halls of Valor. The runes, right? On, on a tyrannical week, like you get like two seconds to go and find your right rune. It's just, it's crazy. Like the the difference in gameplay that's required between Halls of Valor and a Shadow Moon is just ridiculous. That like you can do it, but um, yeah, it's savage. It's absolutely, and it's a it's such a long dungeon, man. Like they should have made it, they should have cut out some trash. Um, they should have like halved some of the ability damage in there. Um, they should have changed timers, right? Like, it's just, it's a hard dungeon. That's the reason why you don't like it. Court of Stars, pretty free. Um, Shadow Moon Boil Your Grounds, completely free. Those dungeons, they're old dungeons that you like because they're easy. So I think it's not the fact that they're um, not fun. It's just that they're too hard. Like, fan favorites, again, they're always going to be the fast, easy ones, right? Like, Moral Souls, yeah, yeah, everyone loves it because it's fast and easy. Also Valor, like, you could make it shorter and easier. Um, and then they should bring them back. They should write, recycle old content. Just don't release it so like some dungeons are busted and some aren't. I think that's the biggest issue, right? Um, but yeah, in general, I'm, I'm sort of agreeing with everything in here again. But anyway, right, this was a, a long episode. Was there five or six forums there? I just love the sound of my own voice. Um, but hopefully you find this interesting. I'd love to hear any feedback of this. If you want to see more in the future, I could just can the series if it's going to do awful. But... Um, Going through, seeing what players actually think of the game, I think it's good for my own uh, knowledge, right? I think it's good for us to try and talk about. We can raise awareness of certain topics. There's things that I wasn't aware of that players are finding friction with. Um, and I think it, it's, uh, it's good to be aware of this. So uh, hopefully you find it fun and interesting anyway. But yeah, if you have... You could drop me a thumbs up and a subscribe that'd be awesome and hopefully we will see you guys in the next one peace